Join us as we head back to school to study the values we never graduate from. It's qualities like faith, honor, courage, character, integrity, honesty, compassion, and more. This is the perfect opportunity to invite a friend, neighbor, or coworker. You won't want to miss one message from this amazing series. Time as this. There you go. 
Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai. Go and gather together all the Jews of Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will do the same. And then, though it is against the law, I will go in to see the king. If I must die, I must die. So Mordecai went away and did everything that Esther had ordered him to do. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for how it pierces our hearts. Father, we thank you for the great change that can happen because of, of your word. We thank you for the availability of it. How it's right there for us to open each and every day to gain truth. To gain the much needed help we need through our daily lives. Father, we thank you for what it does you know, through encouragement, through conviction, through challenging us. May it do all those things today as we delve into it. Father, we love you. Speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, end times discussion we will hold for another day. In fact, we have had end time discussions uh, here before where we've discussed the end of days, the end, the end times. We will hold that for another day. But I will say this. Whether you believe we're living in the end times or not, we can all agree that each day we're closer to the end than we've ever been before, right? We can, I think we can all agree on that. Some of us may even take a step further. Some of us may even agree that we are probably closer to the end than we are to the beginning. Okay? I think some of us can agree to that. End times or not, we are living in some times. We're, we're living in some times, some crazy times. Times when morality and, and uh, integrity and, and common sense seem to be flipped upside down. We're living in, in some times. Times when Scripture, the word that we just open and we believe and we follow, times when Scripture can clearly and definitively say one thing, yet those who say that Scripture is their tenant argue that it says and means something totally opposite. We're living in some times. We have... We, we abuse Scripture to condone what we're doing rather than for it to convict us of what we're doing. We're living in some, some times. I read this uh, satirical quote this week. It said, I will gladly believe in God if you'll just show me evidence his opinions are identical to mine. What? We, we snicker because we understand uh, but this is unfortunate truth that people today live in. I will gladly believe in God if you'll just show me evidence his opinions are identical to mine. How ridiculous. Times like these deserve Christians like Esther. Although she wasn't a Christian at all, she was a Jew because this was before Christ, we can still learn a lot about being a Christian in an out-of-control times. Okay? So let's get started. Times like these don't deserve silence. Times like these do not, don't deserve silence. As, as Christians, we must no longer remain silent. I, I'm sure that some of you, many of you here today may not have issues with remaining silent. Uh, I've heard you. Or you talk. And uh, I've seen you on Facebook. Remaining silent is you have no difficulty with that. Uh, don't look at your spouse or your significant other while I'm talking about this. It should be awkward. But they can probably attest to uh, your inability to remain silent. And they're going to probably be mad at me for this because I'm going to say, don't remain silent. Don't remain silent. Now, this doesn't mean that we've been given the, the license to run our mouths. Not at all. What I'm saying is that we can no longer remain silent when it matters the most. And what matters the most is that we're leading people to Jesus. Right? That's what 
matters the most. And what matters the most is that, that, uh, that Queen Esther shows us is this great power of when to speak, right? And when to remain silent. I reminded of this commercial that came on a while back. It's an old commercial. I don't know if they still run it. And there's this lady, and she just she is just talking up a storm. Like she's talking to everybody. She missed Chatter, Chatty Chatterson. And it is exhausting seeing her talk. You ever don't look at your neighbor. You ever met somebody like that? Where is it exhausting? To watch them talk to you. It's like they're talking at you. Instead of with you. It's like they're yelling at you. When they talk to you. And this is what's happening with Miss Chatty, Chatty, Chatty Chatterson. And it's exhausting to see her talk to everybody. But then she goes to the doctor's office. And there's doctors who's talking to her about this problem physically she has. And the doctor says, do you have any questions? And Miss Chatty Chatterson doesn't say a word. She's quiet. It's nothing but silence. She's as quiet as a church man. When it really matters, when it really matters the most concerning her health, she's quiet. She's silent. We cannot remain silent when it matters the most. If you need the cure for cancer, if you need the cure for cancer, would you remain silent? No. We know the remedy to sin and to death. But sometimes you can't pry it out of our mouths with a crowbar. It's like when I'm trying to brush my four-year-old's teeth. Have you ever tried to brush a, a, kid's, a kid's tooth, teeth, teeth? <laughs> it can become difficult and you cannot pry their mouth open to, to brush their teeth. And sometimes that's what it's like for us. To talk when it matters the most about Jesus. We'll get on Facebook. We'll get on Twitter. We'll get on Insta. Because that's the cool way to say Instagram. We'll get on Snapchat. I don't even know what that is. But we'll get on it. And we'll expel our guts for the entire world to see about things that don't amount to a hill of beans Gaston County talk. They make no difference things we spill our guts about and like and forward and paste and copy and all that stuff. Yet we can't open our mouths and tell others about the one thing that makes all the difference. The one who makes an eternal difference. We have the remedy, folks. We have the cure to sin and death. Remember what Jesus said. Whoever acknowledges me before others I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. I want to share with you a quick word for you. It goes like something like this. You may have heard me say something like this before here. Quick word for you. Inaction, action, and reaction determine your reach. Inaction, Action and reaction determine your reach. When I say action, I mean your words and deeds. And I'll put it in a modern day scenario for you. You're at the lake and a person is drowning. You know how to save them. Inaction would mean you turn and walk away. Or you do nothing. You freeze. Action means you say, somebody call 911. Hey, somebody? That's a song, isn't it? Just realize that. Somebody call 911, don't sing the song because you waste your time. And then you, you bay watch it over to, to the rescue. Inaction and action determines your reach to the person who's down. Reaction needs a different scenario. Say you're in the drive through at Hardy's and got in, uh, in where we where do we live? Stanley. <laughs> Say you're. Say you're in the drive-thru at Hardy's and Stanley, right? Yeah, everybody, raise your hand if you've been through the drive-thru at Hardy's and Stanley. Do that. Let's do that together. Let's take a poll. All of you. Come on. Come on. All right. Now, you guys know the ins and outs of how to do the drive-thru at Hardy's, don't you? If you come in the back entrance, this is, I'm, I'm about to show that tape of mine right here, okay? But, but it does go along with what we're talking about. 
It's about reaction. It, it, it can go in the back entrance there, and the line is busy, say, in the morning when it gets packed up, right? What is the proper Christian thing to do? I've been proud of my church in so many ways. But this morning, folks, takes the cake. Exactly. You circle around the front of parties, and you come in the back there and get in line. That's the proper Christian way to navigate parties and stay on But here's what gets my goat. Have you ever done the proper thing, but then when you get there, someone comes in the back way, and they don't do the proper thing. They cut in front of you. You ever been there? What is your reaction in that situation? <laughs> is that not very Christian? No, no, no. That doesn't help with the sermon at all. <laughs> Your reaction determines your reach in this little situation we're talking about here. Because you might have a Depot Church sticker on your car. You might have a hashtag for Stanley Depot Church sticker on your car. You might be wearing an I Love My Church t-shirt. And so your reaction will determine your reach with this person. Okay? How do you react? We can't remain silent. And because our inaction... Our action and our reaction, all of which determine how we reach others. Okay? Times like these don't deserve silence. Next thing. Embrace the challenge of living in times like these. Embrace the challenge of living in times like these. Kids, students, young adults, adults, all y'all. All y'all. I'm speaking directly to you right now. We are, we are not, students, kids, I know they're out there, but they are, they are not the church of the future. We are not the church of some future. We are the church of right now. Our kids are the church of right now. Our students are the church of right now. And you are a part of the church of right now. And it's time that we embrace this challenge. Adults, I, I just to be honest with you, we, we make too many excuses for our kids and our students and ourselves. We make too many excuses. You hear this a lot. Well, at least they're going. At least they're going to church. We have to, yes, thank God, at, at least they're going. But we must expect more from our kids and our students. We must expect more from ourselves than just going and being in the church. If we don't quit making excuses and start raising our standards, our expectations of our kids, our students, ourselves, all we'll ever be is at least they're in church. We'll never be the church. Their reach will be stunted. Our reach will be stunted. If we don't start expecting more out of ourselves than just showing up, then guess what? Our churches will never be more than just a show. That hurts. I'll say it again. If we don't start expecting more out of ourselves than just showing up, then our churches will never be more than just a show. The church. We should expect our kids and students to be missionaries to their schools and to their friends. But they're around every single day. It's time for us to allow our kids and students to have a challenge to embrace. We shouldn't, uh, we should expect for ourselves to be missionaries to our places of work and, and our community. Listen to, listen to this from Esther 14. For if you remain silent, if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Mordecai asks Esther to embrace the challenge. She goes on to say that if she doesn't embrace the challenge, that someone else will. When I was a kid, my dad used to do something to me that really got on my nerves. But I deserved it. 
My dad would ask me to help him with something, for example, mow the grass. And I was a kid, I didn't want to help mow the grass. I wanted to play. So dad would say, well, I will get your friend so-and-so down the street, and I'm going to pay him to come up here and mow the grass. <laughs> I don't want to do it, but I don't want my best friend so-and-so coming down up here and getting paid to do it, right? It cut deep. I don't want to know what it feels like for our Heavenly Father to use someone else because we didn't make ourselves available. Because we weren't willing. Because we didn't embrace the challenge of living in times like these. I don't want to know what that feels like. Embrace the challenge because if you don't, God will find someone who will. Why not you? Why not you? God, God's going to use someone to carry out his plan. Why should that someone be you? If you remain silent, someone's going to speak. Why can't that be you? If we make ourselves available for God to use, then he will make sure that we are capable to perform the task. Make yourself available for God to use, and he will make you capable to perform the task. We rely on God for capability. God relies on us for availability. Hear me? Tip. The God of the universe, who set the stars in space, who placed earth perfectly in its place, a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, we're either hot or cold. We're either burning up or we're freezing. Who placed the earth perfectly in its place. Who, who put us on this earth at this moment in time. Because he knew what we could do. It's not coincidence. It's a plan. And it's our mission. Times like these also deserve hard prayer. Times like these deserve hard prayer. Listen to this I heard from Pastor Chris Hill. Pray while others play. Then you will stay while others stray. Pray while others play, then you will stay while others stray. Esther was preparing to go before the king and face possible, change that, certain death. She didn't ask for an army. She didn't ask for an uprising. She didn't ask for a weapon. The first thing she asked for from others to do and did herself was to take action by praying and fasting. That was step one. We know we're supposed to pray. We know we're supposed to pray, but let's just be honest with each other this morning, do we? Do we really? Do we do it? I mean, we even tell others. We pray for me for this. Do we? Or do we forget about it by time? We challenge you with this today. And I'm challenging myself, too, because it's, it's a difficult thing to do, but it's bold. I'm talking about boldness right here. When someone asks you to pray for them, don't say, I will. Do it right then. And I'm sorry, Garrett, if you asked me to pray for you this morning, and I didn't do it. Nope. But I'm convicted about it right now. <laughs> Sometimes the sermon reaches the preacher, too. Let me challenge all of us to don't say I will, but to go ahead and do it, to make sure that we do it. I also want to challenge you to be like the Apostle Paul says. This prayer life of praying without ceasing. Praying without ceasing. It's, a, it's carrying on a constant dialogue with God. If you pray without ceasing, you'll never cease to pray. That means you're always praying. You don't have to worry about forgetting to you're always doing it. You don't have to worry about not doing it. Now, we all have this inner dialogue going on in our minds, don't we? Lord, I hope so. Please, tell me you do. You guys have this inner dialogue going in your mind a lot, don't you? Okay, good. Thank you. We always have this inner dialogue going on in our mind as we're thinking things and talking things out in our heads. Why not include God in that? Why not God make God a part of that inner dialogue? 
including him, want to make it a topic of conversation. If you don't know what to say. Sometimes we get in a prayer, or we, we want to pray, we get in a prayer mode, but we just don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Listen, just call the name of Jesus. That's all you got to do. Just call out the name of Jesus. He knows your heart. He hears your voice. He knows you. Call the name of Jesus if you don't know what to say. Ultimately, prayer needs to become a habit in our lives. I don't know if this is true. I mentioned it last week, though. 21 days, right? To instill a habit into your life. 21 days is what it takes of consistent work to, to make something a habit. I looked up the word habit in the dictionary, uh, and, and when I read the definition, it just made me smile. Listen to the, the, the definition of habit. Something that's hard to give up. Something that's hard to give up. Shouldn't we want a prayer life that would be hard to give up? Shouldn't we want a prayer life that, that would be hard to quit? And times like these, the times we're living in, these times, they deserve that. James 5, 16 says this, Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest, the fervent, in some cases, uh, prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Times like these deserve hard prayer. Last thing, times like these deserve desperate measures. Desperate measures. We are all blessed to live in the country we live free to practice, and free to perform our religion, to live out our faith every day. We should never take that for granted. Right now in prisons all over the world are Christians who have practiced and performed their faith in a country that won't allow them to. And so now they are in prison awaiting a sentence, which could be death. Esther said in verse 15, And then, though it is against the law, I will go in to see the king. And if I must die, I must die. Now, as we are blessed to live in the country, we do definitely be different for us here. We, we may or may not have to die for our faith. What it may look like, more, more so here, is that there's going to be some relationships that might perish or need to die. It might look like here that there's some lifestyle changes, some things in your life that you're going to need to put to death. It may be an attitude that has to die. Whatever it is that stands between you and Jesus, it's going to have to die. And if it stands between us and our mission, our reach, it's going to have to die. It's going to have to die. In fact, there will be things in our life that will perish and, and will die, whether we like it or not, because we are Christians. And it's all because you are unashamed believer and follower of Jesus Christ. People who want your friends, they're not going to be one of your friends anymore. Family members, maybe? Might not talk to you anymore. But listen, these losses, these things that have to die, that we have to put to death, these losses are not for your demise. They're not to hurt you. In fact, they're not really losses. In fact, these losses are to protect you. These losses are to bless you on your mission. There's a saying that we really like to say sometimes. Man, I just love them to death. Um, that in the South is probably next to, uh, what's the one we make fun of all the time? Bless your heart. Bless your heart. I just love them to death. What does that mean? Let's talk about it for a second. What does this mean? That I love that person so much that I could kill them. Is that, is that what I'm saying? No, that's not what it means. I love them so much that I would die for them. Uh, 
that's what he needs. I just love them to death. I love them so much that I would die for them. Now you might be more careful with that word, that phrase. You don't throw that around much anymore. I just love them to death. Folks, we need to love Jesus to death. <clears throat> Times like these deserve Christians, followers, that will follow him unto death. Quite frankly, what we believe is a matter of life and death. Whether or not we act like it or talk about Jesus can affect the eternal life or death of someone. Desperate times calls for desperate measures. You don't have to look far to see desperate people in the world we live in today. They're desperate for truth. They're desperate for hope. They're desperate for some kind of love. People are so desperate, they'll attach themselves to anything. But there's only one thing one thing that will truly provide the truth, truth, hope, and love they're looking for, and that's Jesus Christ. Desperate for us to open our mouths, these people are, and proclaim Jesus. Desperate for us to take action and show people Jesus. Jesus went to great lengths to secure your salvation. You know that? He went to great lengths to secure your salvation. Something that resonates in, in our lives as we were called to be church planters was this question. If your child was lost, when would you start looking for them? If your child was lost, when would you start looking for them? Right now. Immediately. Right now. If your child was lost, what measures would you take to find them. Any and all measures I would take to find them. To the ends of the earth. Me and Forrest Gump running shoes from east to west to find them. God's children are lost. God's children are lost. The time is now, and the measure is you and me. Let's pray. Father God, you created us and planned appropriately for us to be on this planet right now, during these times. If we prove ourselves to be available, you will equip us. So Father, there's nothing left else than to just do. It. For us to just open our mouths and proclaim Jesus to the world. For us to use our hands and proclaim Jesus through our works. There's nothing left for it but for us to do it. So Father, today as we all pray, I pray that this morning would not be just another Sunday worship experience that we come to and we feel good and we leave Everything's okay. Oh, no. No. May today be a launching point for missionaries. May we proclaim the name of Jesus every single day, every single moment, every single opportunity. And we're not proclaiming the name of Jesus, Father. We're with Jesus. Praying for him. Lord, you created us for a time such as this. And Father, if you planned it and created us for this, then Lord, you have certainly and certainly will 
prepare us for this. So Father, as we all stand in a few moments and we sing, Lord, I pray that you will speak to our hearts. That life change will happen today. And that all of us leave here better, different than we came. If there's someone here that doesn't know you, Lord, I pray that this day will be the first day of the rest of their lives. That they would be made anew through your life-giving sacrifice. Father, hear our hearts prayer and speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen.